Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, Course in Miracles. We are studying the text. My name is Eloisa Ramos, and I'm here with my daughter, Sonia, and my friend, Teresa. Hey, Teresa. So we are uh, on Chapter 12, Holy Spirit's Curriculum. And we left off in the middle of Section 7, um, Looking Within. So let's see, we left off on paragraph nine, um, and maybe we can just review a tiny bit here so we can get back into the paragraph. Um, so it's talking about the miracles. Um, they occur under the right guidance, of course, of the Holy Spirit. Um, and let's see. And... Holy Spirit is our teacher, and we are learning, uh, learning, um, I was going to say we're learning the truth, but it's not that we're learning the truth, it's, ah, uh, we're learning to recognize the truth, okay? <laughs> the truth is beyond learning, but we have forgotten or taught ourselves incorrectly, which is a block to the awareness or the recognition of the truth. So that's what what that's what the miracle is. It's it's a it's a change, it's an undoing from the false distorted perception um, that's our own doing uh, as the ego thought system it, and and corrects that to true perception, which is the um, which results in miracles and healing. Um, and it's, it's, it's saying here is this, this is how we know that, you know, we're under the right guidance is we recognize it by the results. It's also the same basically for, <laughs> for when we have chosen the wrong teacher, we can also see the results. Okay. Which is pain, suffering, fear. It's unhappiness basically. So anytime we're not um, perfectly joyous, it's because we have been accepting direction from the ego rather than the Holy Spirit, which is our right mind um, and the voice for God. Um, let's see, three, paragraph three, Holy Spirit is invisible, but you can see the result of his presence. Um, and that's with a capital P. So that's the awareness of love's presence. Um, and through them, you will learn that he, with capital H, is there. Um, so that's the importance of the miracle is that it reinforces and it teaches us that God is there. God is real. That God is all-encompassing um, unconditional love and um, is all powerful so that the loss of the world do not, um, what's the word? Um, bu 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 are undone. The loss of the worlds are undone um, through miracles precisely because the source of the miracle is God that is beyond time, beyond the loss of the world. Um, oh, that's what it says right here, uh, line three in paragraph three. Every law of time and space of magnitude and mass is transcended. Okay, For what the Holy Spirit en enables you to do is clearly beyond all of them. So, and, and that's why it's called A Course in Miracles because <laughs> we're being taught um, we're learning how to how to offer miracles uh, and blessings. Um, so let's see. Um, okay, so let's see. Let me see here. Uh, it talks about manifestation six. I am the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Um, let's just back up one line there. Paragraph five, line six. Two ways of looking at the world are in your mind and your perception will reflect the guidance you have chosen. Okay, ego or Holy Spirit. 
Um, I am the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And when you see me, it will be because you have invited him. For he will send you his witnesses if you will but look upon them. Okay. Um, remember always that you see what you seek. For what you seek, you will find. Okay. The ego finds what it seeks and only that. It does not find love, for that is not what it is seeking. Yet seeking and finding are the same. And if you seek for two goals, you will find them, but you will recognize neither. Um, you will think they are the same because you want both of them. Okay, so um, so the Son of God is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Um, um, and so when we see uh, love in our brothers, it is because um, we are in our right mind and we have chosen to uh, follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Um, now, the ego also finds what it seeks, but it does not seek love. So when we find anything other than love, when we find um, suffering, pain, attack, um, misery, death, um, then it's because we are seeking um, through the ego, with the ego. Uh, okay. And so here on paragraph seven, it, it makes a further distinction between you know the ego thought system and the thoughts of God. And it says, I said before that what you project, okay, that's ego, or extend, Holy Spirit, is up to you. So love is extended, fear, hate, attack, conflict, separation. That's a projection, that's projected um, from the ego thought system which is a belief in separation, okay? Uh, but you must do one or the other. That is a law of mind. And you must look in before you look out. Um, it, because as you look in, you choose the guide for seeing. So in other words, what comes first <laughs> is what we see within us, <laughs> what we believe about what we are, okay? And that is what shows up in a world that seems to be outside of us. It's not really outside of us, but through projection, we make up a world that seems to be outside of us. Um, because, because then you look out and behold his witnesses. Um, so it's a mirror. Um, this is why you find what you seek. Okay, what you want in yourself, you will make manifest and you will accept it from the world because you put it there by wanting it. Okay, when you think you are projecting what you do not want, it is still because you do want it. Okay, and you know, this, this, <laughs> um, um, it's not easy to really accept that, but it's the truth, okay? Because the mind um, is the causal level and the experience is the result. So whether the experience is judged something we want or something we don't want, it's still the effect of our thoughts, of our thinking, of what we believe about ourselves, about what we think or believe we are. And that's and that's a and that's a decision that we make either by following the Holy Spirit or the ego thought system. Um, okay, so okay. So, so seven, this leads directly to dissociation for it represents the acceptance of two goals. Okay. So to not, to, not, to so to, let's see. So to project what we don't want means that we have split or we have dissociated part of our mind 
so that the unconscious part is manifesting what we have rejected and dissociated from. And now we don't think we have anything to do with what showed up that we don't want, but we do because it's still our mind, even though we dissociate from that part of it, it's still our mind. <laughs> um, we just can't recognize, we just can't, we forget, we forget that we, you know, um, what's the word? Um, dissociation is basically forgetting. We put a block there to remembering um, precisely because we want to believe that um, we can get rid of things through projection, thoughts we don't like. Um, and it's not true. Thoughts cannot leave the mind. But the ego thinks that they can. That's why the ego is the belief in separation, because because we are thoughts in the mind of God. And to believe that a thought can separate from that mind is to believe that it can leave its creator, its cause, it, the mind of God. So, <laughs> so of course, in the world uh, that is a projection of the ego thought system, there's going to be the belief that... Um, Thoughts can leave the mind because it represents the idea that the separation really happened. And so it reflects that. Um, in, in, well, if we believe it. <laughs> um, so let's see. Yeah. And so eight. So that's why uh, the mind then sees a divided world outside itself. Okay. Because it's projecting that but not within. Um, okay. Um, yeah, but, but see line 10 there. Yet as long as you perceive the world is split, you are not healed. For to be healed is to perceive, to pursue one goal because you ac have accepted only one and one but one. Okay. Eight, when you want only love, you will see nothing else. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's a very clear guideline. <laughs> this is how I know when if my mind is split or not, <laughs> if I am, um, you know, following the Holy Spirit or not. Okay. Uh, so duality is basically um, a split mind. And, um, and it's because I have not decided completely for love. You know, there's still, um, there's still an attraction to the idea of sin, guilt, and fear and death. Um, and so I have forgotten that, that, that none of that is possible. And I'm believing that the impossible is possible. Um, and that's why it's called an illusory, you know, it's called an illusion or a dream. Um, so because I'm giving reality to what has no reality. Okay, so uh, here we go. Paragraph nine. Okay, so in, any questions before we pick up from there? No? Okay. The power of decision is your one remaining freedom as a prisoner of this world. You can decide to see it right. What you made of it is not its reality, for its reality is only what you give it. You cannot really give anything but love to anyone or anything, nor can you really receive anything but love from them. But if you think you have received anything else, it is because you have looked within mm -hmm. and thought you saw the power to give something else within yourself. It was only this decision that determined what you found, for it was the decision for what you sought. Okay. Um, okay, so 
when we see a world of attack and suffering and death, okay, um, we are believing what is not true. And because we're believing what is not true, we have imprisoned ourselves. Um, because remember that once we believe something, we give it reality, and then we think that it's real. So we're not even going to question it. We're not even, even going to uh, say, well, wait a minute, I want out. <laughs> I don't want to be a prisoner. We're just going to say, oh, man, what a bummer. We, you know, this this world sucks, you know, look at all the wars, look at all the conflict, look at all the suffering, you know, who put me here? It wasn't me. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, so what it's saying is, is, look, we still have the power of decision. And um, this is our one remaining freedom because our beliefs have imprisoned ourselves in this world that we think is real, okay? However, we can still decide to see it right, you know, and some of the lessons say, you know, I want to see this differently. Um, let's see. The miracle is a change in perception, precisely because we are asking to see things differently, and we open the mind to seeing things differently um, and therefore changing our beliefs, changing, um, uh, being okay with being wrong about how we thought things worked, about who I thought I was and seeing that, oh man, that's not true. Um, so, um, so, so what we make of this world, okay, um, is personal um, because, you know, depending on our background, our experiences, our upbringing, our religion, all of that, we're going to look at this world as our life. And we're going to say, this, this is how it is based on my past experience. Okay. But, but that reality that I give to it um, is only there for me to see because that's what I'm believing it is. And it's reflecting back as a witness to my beliefs. <laughs> okay. So in truth, I cannot really give anything but love because that's how I was created. That's how we were all created. However, if I see anything other than love, just like it says up here, uh, eight, when you want to only love, you will see nothing else. Okay, so when I see something else, um, it is because, um, uh, let's see, line five, I think that I, that I have received something else. Okay, so, 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 so in truth, I can only receive love and I can only give love. But if I believe that I can be attacked, that I can be, um, that I can die, that I am a body and an ego that, um, let's see, that is in opposition and in conf conflict, with other bodies and egos that are separate from me, okay, then I am believing that the separation is real and that the impossible is possible. And um, and and that's seeking to find something that <laughs> never happened, <laughs> as if it had happened. Um, let me see. If you think you have received anything else, it is because you have looked within and thought you saw the power to give something else within yourself. Okay. So I made it possible when I looked within to be different than how God created me. 
I looked within and said, oh man, I am such a bad, evil, sinful person. And uh, that's what I give. I give attack and I give hurt and I, you know, um, and death. Because I believe that I am this body that is separate from other bodies and that no longer is as God created it, which is eternal spirit. And it was only this decision that determined what I found in the world. Because it was the decision to seek and find that, basically. Um, okay. It, it, any questions? No? Okay. Number 10. You are afraid of me because you looked within and are afraid of what you saw. Yet you could not have seen reality, for the reality of your mind is the loveliest of God's creations. Coming only from God, its power and grandeur could only bring you peace if you really looked upon it. If you are afraid, it is because you saw something that is not there. Yet in that same place, you could have looked upon me and all your brothers and the perfect safety of the mind which created us. For we are there in the peace of the Father who wills to extend his peace through you. Um, actually, in the paragraph nine, or because the end line in sentence five, it says you, looked, you have looked within and thought you saw the power to give something else, uh, something else within yourself. Um, and then 10 here, you looked within and are afraid of what you saw. Um, so it's really just, I don't know, because the thinking stands out to me, because the thinking, um, I was reading in Tara Singh's book, uh, nothing, you know, can be threatened, nothing unrealistic, um, and he was saying that it's not just a thought, like, it's just a false I just, I guess I'm not explaining it very well, but it just all rests upon thought, which is false. Because all of the thoughts that I think are not actually, I'm not even thinking anything. Right. They're not real thoughts. Yeah. Okay. So we call thinking uh, with, the, with the thoughts of separation, okay, which is, um, which is, um, let's see, which, which are thoughts based on fear. Okay. All thoughts based on fear are not real thoughts. Um, the, the thoughts of God are based, are based on love, on, on God's love, unconditional love. So, yeah. So to think thoughts of separation is um it, 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 it's, it's a basis of fear so so when we look within with fear uh let's see um oh, I see how question. huh and no never mind after you're done i have another question yeah because see how paragraph 10 starts it says you are afraid of me okay so it starts off with fear. Once we go into fear, we're in the ego thought system. Okay. So if we're afraid of God, if we're afraid of love, okay, if, if we're afraid of the thoughts of perfect equality, for example, why? Because we want specialness. Okay. We, uh, you know, I want to be separate and different and superior and better than you. Okay. As long as I want that, I'm asking for inequality and I'm asking for scarcity. I want, you know, I want, um, let's see, I want contrast. 
So exchange so that there's gain and loss. Okay, but the thoughts of God, there is no such thing as exchange. There is no separation. There's no such thing as gain or loss because it's all perfect equality. So, so if I'm afraid of perfect love of God, okay, it's because I looked within and I was afraid of what I saw. But here's the thing. I could not have been looking at reality because reality is not fearful. So I mistook, <laughs> I mistook the ego thought system for the thoughts of God. I confused them. Okay, because the truth is, is that the reality of our mind is the loveliest of God's creation. Okay, and here's the thing is, if I don't think that's true, and I want to be right, and I give more value to being right, than accepting the truth that I'm the loveliest of God's creation, I'm not going to see clearly. Uh, what's there because I'm going to block the truth from um, from my awareness. Um, okay, so see how the 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 sentence here in uh, line three is I italicized. It says, "If you really looked upon it, it could only bring you peace." Okay. So when we look within, there's a layer of fear that we have to go through before we can actually um, experience and know the truth of what we are there. We have to be able to go through the, the fear there. Um, if, if we only look within and stop at the fear, and turn around and get scared and oh no i'm not going to look there again that was really scary <laughs> it's because i put this layer of all this stuff that i uh, made up about myself and um and that's what i'm coming to first before i'm actually seeing um the truth under there um and so that's why four says, if you are afraid, it's because you saw something that is not there. Um, I made up those thoughts. They're not really there, but it's like a monster under the bed. And I'm a small child that's really scared and really think there's a monster under there. And, you know, if I look under there, I might actually see a monster there because, because that's what I think is there. And I'm going to imagine it there. I'm going to project it there. <laughs> So I need someone that comes, you know, with a flashlight to show me, hey, no, look, really, trust me, I'm looking, there's nothing there. And then they'll say, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. But the mind has to be open to seeing the truth, to seeing that I'm wrong, um, to seeing that my perception is wrong. Okay, what was the question, Sonia? Um, I guess you kind of answered it in a way but um, the beginning, like you were saying, that layer that we look at of fear. Yeah. Um, but isn't that layer just the sin, guilt, and all of the stuff that I projected onto God and don't want to, like, cause that's all of the guilt and the sin from thinking that the separation actually happened. So yeah. that would be the layer, right? So that's why I wouldn't want to look at it because I think I'm sinful and guilty um, for splitting off and you know, projecting everything outward. So if I were to look inward and take responsibility for that, then I would be afraid, right? So that's kind of like, yeah. Know. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because when we split, um, you know, where was that? When we split the mind over here, well, oh, the dissociation over here, paragraph um, seven. seven. Yeah, it's right here, line seven. This leads directly to dissociation, where it presents the acceptance of two goals. So once we dissociate, we split the mind, and, and what happens is that we project, but we also repress. So 
Um, so the fearful stuff is outside, but we also repress it because it's it's really uh, inside of us and then it's getting projected outside and then it's getting reflected back. So when we go inside, we have to be able to go through that layer of repressed. Um, you know, if we see the attacker outside, we're gonna have to look inside and say, oh, I'm really the attacker, okay? And that's not something that I really wanna see, okay? But but it's not true, you see? So the problem is, is that we're afraid of looking at that because, um, because we have trained ourselves to think that what is fearful is real, you see? Rather than what is loving is real, we've trained our mind to see it upside down. Um, otherwise, there would be no fear of looking within. There would be no fear of healing at all. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. 11. When you have accepted your mission to extend peace, you will find peace. For by making it manifest, you will see it. The holy witnesses will surround you because you called upon them and they will come to you. I have heard your call and I have answered it, but you will not look upon me nor hear the answer that you sought. That is because you do not yet want only that. Yet as I become more real to you, you will learn that you do not, you do want only that. And you will see me as you look within and we will look upon the real world together. Through the eyes of Christ, only the real world exists, and only the real world can be seen. As you decide, so will you see, and all that you see but witness to your decision, but witnesses to your decision. Okay, so what we've been saying so far is everything we see is a witness to our decision. This summarizes that. Um, but I think what's lovely is the comforting thought that when we join Jesus and look at the world, we see through the eyes of Christ and see only love and forgiveness and holiness, innocence. Yes, yes. But first we have to accept our mission, which is to extend peace. It's interesting to me too, because I think in real life, when I, when I do relax about things and just kind of go with the flow, when I'm extending, you know, love and peace, I do see more love and peace in the world. It's like, that's what I get back. It's really yes. interesting. Yeah. Okay. And in order to extend peace, okay, we have to know that we have peace and it's within us. Right. Okay. And so in the previous paragraph, the line three there. Mm -hmm. um, so, Okay. So coming only from God, its power and grandeur could only bring you peace if you really looked upon it. Um, okay, so so in other words, we have to be willing to look within and go past the fear, fearful thoughts of the ego to be able to discover that peace that's there so that we can extend it. Um, so it's, um, let's see, it's, it's kind of a loop. So you have to get it. You have to take the first step to, to get it started. Otherwise the loop becomes one of fear yeah, of miscreation, because if we don't get to the place of peace, what gets, um, projected are all of the ego thought systems that, that are the block to the awareness of love's presence. Um, and that's why we, we we can't extend extend it because we've lost the awareness that it's actually within us, within us. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, the practice of forgiveness is, is almost like a practice of, um, of develop, in developing faith uh, because you know, when we forgive, we forgive what my brother did not do to me. 
<laughs> because the initial reaction is, oh, my brother did this to me. He, you know, he attacked me. He was unloving. Okay. <laughs> um, and now we have to turn around and look at that and say, well, wait a minute. He, he cannot offer me anything but love. Okay. So why am I, why is he witnessing to me what is not true? Okay. Well, then I have to go back and accept responsibility that that's what I must be wanting to see. And therefore, I am calling it into my life. It's not my brother who's, you know, um, who's doing it to me. I'm doing it to myself. Yeah. Okay, so eight. So as you decide, you will see, and it, and it tells us which teacher that we have chosen. Yeah, and that's the witness to our decision. And it's not, you know, it's really a feedback loop. So if we don't make it, uh, like, if we don't judge it, <laughs> we don't judge ourselves. Like, oh man, you know, this is not what I wanted. Okay, well my mind split, you know, I've decided for the ego here. Okay. Um, and, you know, I, yeah, I forgive myself. Um, you know, I wasn't in my right mind, I forgive myself. And, you know, I forgive my brother, whatever, he wasn't in his right mind. So we begin to, uh, to undo the fear around um, the idea of sin as error. Um, because the forgiveness recognizes that the doing itself is all part of a world of illusion um, and that the true self cannot ever really be attacked or hurt. And therefore the true self cannot ever attack or hurt. Um, because our true self is only love that as we were created. Okay. Um, so it's really a, um, let's see, it's a, it's learning to see with Holy Spirit vision rather with the, rather than with the body's eyes. Okay, all right, number 12. When you look within, and see me, it will be because you have decided to manifest truth. As you manifest it, you will see it both without and within. You will see it without because you saw it first within. Okay, so everything you behold without is a judgment of what you beheld within. If it is your judgment, it will be wrong. For judgment is not your function. If it is the judgment of the Holy Spirit, it will be right. For judgment is his function. You should you share his function only by judging as he does, reserving no judgment at all for yourself. You will judge against yourself, but he will judge for you. Um, okay, so. Okay, so so manifesting truth. Um, okay, so if you look within and see me, um, Christ, love, um, you know, Holy Spirit, uh, it's because you have decided to manifest truth um, and you will see it both without and within because there will be no split mind there. It will be um, a, an alignment um, and, and you will see it um, without or outside because you saw it first within. So the first is always within because that's cause, the cause. <laughs> That's the cause of perception. <laughs> um, 
everything you behold without is a judgment of what you beheld within. It is. Okay. All right. So this is this is where we see separation. So so every time we see separation outside, separate from what we think we are, it's because we are judging. We're making a judgment and we're splitting the mind. But the Holy Spirit judgment does not split the mind. Um, so that's that's why if it's your judgment, it will be wrong. Okay, because 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 judgment, um, we're not in a position to judge when we are not in our right mind. Okay, and when we are in our right mind, we recognize that the Holy Spirit is, we give it to the Holy Spirit to decide for me for God, because we precisely because we recognize that as a separate self, we cannot judge. We, we're not in a position to be able to see the truth. Our perception is distorted. Um. But but because the Holy Spirit is directly linked, is our direct link, is a um, it's a memory of God, then its judgment will be loving. Um, and therefore, for judgment is his function because his function is is love, is to teach us to remember love. Um, and we share his function. Only by judging as he does. Um, uh, with with um, with vision, which which sees only innocence, um, reserving no judgment at all for yourself, because you will judge against yourself. So, so when we judge as a split mind, there's two of us. There's the one that's doing the judging, and then there's the self that's the object of the judgment that we think is us. Um, and, um, you know, it's always going to be, um, there's no way to not judge against ourselves since we're split. Okay, so even if we judge ourselves positively, because there's, there's a split. There's actually two selves there. <laughs> so, you know, there's the judge and then there's the self that we think we are as an object that is being judged. But, um, but, but even if we, if we think, oh, oh, you did, you know, you're, you're so, uh, what's the word here? Um, I'm judging myself. Oh, you're, you're, um, well, you know, judgment is always based on comparison. So you're going to always say something like, oh, um, you're better than, or you're, uh, you know, you're smarter than that, or you're, you know, you're, um, well, well, that's actually, when we judge ourselves negatively, it's also a comparison. So we're saying, oh man, you know, you're smarter than that. You know, that means you're really dumb now. So <laughs> So the the opposites go together. So even if I judge myself positively, like, oh, you're really, you really did a smart thing here. It means that at some other point, I could do a really dumb thing. So, so I may, I may be judging myself positively now, but at some point, you know, I'm, it's got the other part, the other opposite to it. So I'm going to end up judging myself negatively too okay uh 13 remember then that whenever you look without and react unfavorably to what you see you have judged yourself unworthy and have condemned yourself to death the death penalty is the ego's ultimate goal for it fully believes that you are a criminal as deserving of death as God knows you are deserving of life. 
The death penalty never leaves the ego's mind, for that is what it always reserves for you in the end. Wanting to kill you as the final expression of its feeling for you, it lets you live but to await death. It will torment you while you live, but its hatred is not satisfied until you die. For your destruction is the one end toward which it works, and the only end with which it will be satisfied. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. You? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's pretty, um, yeah, just... Yeah, the ego literally does not know love. It just wants to be the because it doesn't know anything else but that. Um, I can't even know that. It's just, oh my God. But, well, think about fear and think about the survival instinct. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the survival instinct is all about the fear of dying, right? I'm yeah. trying to survive here. I don't want to die. It's a matter of mm -hmm. life or death. You know, I got to meet this deadline. <laughs> deadline. Uh, <laughs> I have a question, though. Um, I'm not sure how this would integrate as an example with the specific paragraph, but in the first line, remember then that whenever you look without, so whenever you look externally and react unfavorably to what you see, you have judged yourself unworthy and have condemned yourself to death. Yeah. So for example, um, what I'm looking at externally, like say there's somebody that uh, wants to catch up or meet with me, but I don't want to. I'm My immediate reaction is no, I just... I don't really want to, like, you know what I mean? Um, that would be looking re at that situation or that person externally and reacting unfavorably, which would be my judgment of, oh, I don't, I don't want to, like, you know? Um, but how would that be judging myself unworthy and condemning myself to death? Oh, because... Scenario? <clears throat> okay, because what you're seeing is you're rejecting them for some reason. There's something there that that you don't want, okay? <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. there's something there you don't want. So you have judged, you have made a judgment about them or the situation or whatever uh, that's negative. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and because that's just a projection of what you really think about yourself inside, what it means is that you have judged yourself negatively also, that you have um, judged yourself really not worth your own time, you see? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, because I'm thinking of two people right now, and I can see, I can see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you judge yourself unworthy of giving yourself time. Because that's you right there. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and and by saying and then by judging yourself unworthy, um, you you basically said said that you that you are not deserving of love. Okay, which is eternal life. And therefore, you're basically saying that you're deserving of death. Uh, okay. as impermanent as an impermanent self okay so that's that would be rejecting my true nature which is eternal okay so okay. It's, yeah it's inherently worthy and 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 it's eternally um loving and it's and it's beyond time so it cannot be unworthy of your time do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, because time is not real. And by saying, oh, no, I'm not going to give you my time. You're making your time more valuable than they are. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, the death penalty is the ego's ultimate goal because, because remember, we're calling forth witnesses. So death is, the ego is calling forth 
death as a witness to the idea that we are not the eternal son of God. Yeah. So it's a denial of the truth, which is what sickness is. And ultimately, you know, what death is. Because it's, um, it's quote unquote proof okay, that we are no longer eternal as God created us. You see, and that's why Jesus resurrected from the dead, because he was saying, well, no, the truth is the truth. You know, you are eternal. Death has no power over the son of God. That's what he was teaching with the resurrection. Hmm. Okay, 14. The ego is not a traitor to God to whom treachery is impossible. But it is a traitor to you who believe that you have been treacherous to your father. That is why the undoing of guilt is an essential part of the Holy Spirit's teaching. For as long as you feel guilty, you are listening to the voice of the ego, which tells you that you have been treacherous to God and therefore deserve death. You will think that death comes from God and not from the ego because by confusing yourself with the ego, you believe that you want death. And from what you want, God does not save you. Okay, so basically it's saying that the ego is a traitor to us. Well, because that's what we believe, right? Mm -hmm. We believe that we separated from God as the ego mm -hmm. and therefore was, was traitor to God. We betrayed God. By right. from God. And we feel tremendous guilt. And the only way to get away from that is to um, not avoid it like the ego wants us to do, but to go with that guilt to the Holy Spirit so it can teach us how to undo the guilt or undo the guilt for us. Yes, because because it's the belief in separation that needs to be undone. Right. Because that's that's where the guilt is coming from. So we have to first recognize, and it's not always that easy, you know, to recognize when we're feeling guilty because we project it. We're in the habit of seeing it in someone else because <laughs> we don't, we want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in trying to get rid of it, we're actually hiding it from ourselves. You see, so it's a block. The projection is a block to the Holy Spirit being able to um, help us undo the guilt. Um, see, see number four, for as long as you feel guilty, you are listening to the voice of the ego, which tells you that you have been treacherous from God and therefore deserve death, okay? So when we believe that punishment is justified, okay? Anytime we believe um, that someone deserves to be punished. Okay, we're believing that um, we're believing that basically uh, we are deserving of death because 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 we're believing that we are separate and that we have perpetrated a, you know an offense, a sin against God, and now we're projecting that and seeing someone else doing the same thing and now we're judging them um, you know unworthy of love and worthy of punishment and death so we're we're basically just saying that about ourselves because it's a projection that's a reflection of you know what's inside um, um okay and because we project it we don't think that you know we're responsible um for for all of this and so you know we want to believe that death comes from god um because let's see because we're because we've made god fearful now <laughs> and we we believe that we that that god is vengeful and is out to get us and and this is how god gets us is by killing us 
Um, and that's only because we have confused ourselves with the ego. Um, and I, and you know, a lot of times uh, people say, "Well, nobody nobody wants death." It says you believe that you want death. Well, um, no, a lot of people do want death. You know, they're they're tired of all the suffering. You know, they this life is really not uh what's the word it's not what they want okay and 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 because and because they're believing that god put him here well then they they believe that death is the way out of here because you know um who knows maybe they'll you know get lucky and go to heaven and couldn't be worse than here this is just like hell anyway so i mean i mean um yeah a lot of people really look at death as a way to uh relieve the suffering um that they're experiencing so it becomes desirable um and and you know line six from what you want god does not save you Okay, because God um, giving us lo love is freedom, basically, and um, and what we want, you know, the the saying, "Be careful what you wish for," <laughs> is basically because the power of the mind, whether it's the ego thought system, um, and you know, the power of belief, it still um, manifests itself. So. Um, and and God's not going to interfere with that, even if it's miscreation. Um, well, first of all, because it's just a dream anyway. So to God, it's it's not there. So why would He interfere in what's not there? <laughs> it's our own dream, but but you know, even in dreams, we we sure have a heck of a time with the ones that are nightmares. I mean, we wake up sweating and screaming. <laughs> I, I I wake up kicking and hitting my husband. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> but um, um, yeah, because you know it seems so real to us. But um, uh, but thank goodness it's not. So, <laughs> but of course we don't realize that till we wake up. So. Um, So as long as we feel guilty, we're listening to the voice of the ego. Okay. And that so the guilt witnesses to the idea that we can be treacherous to God, you know, that we can offend God, that we can attack God. Um, and that um, you know, we are no longer loving, that we are in opposition to God. And and therefore, you know. We should be afraid of death, of God because God is trying to kill us. Um, and and uh, that's why, you know, over here in the previous paragraph, um, you know, like line four, wanting to kill you is the final expression of its feeling for you. <laughs> that's the ego. We project that onto God. Um, it lets you live but to await death. Okay. So, um, yeah. Because the death, line three, the death penalty is really um, part of the ego's mind. Um, um, and, and it's the belief that, you know, we're bodies and um, no longer has God created us. So, okay. Um, okay, uh, 15. So when you are tempted to yield to the desire for death, Remember that I did not die. You will realize that this is true when you look within and see me. Would I have overcome death for myself alone? And would eternal life have been given me of the Father unless he had also given it to you? Unless he had also given it to you? When you learn to make me manifest, you will never see death. 
for you will have looked upon the deathless in yourself and you will see only the eternal as you look out upon a world that cannot die. Okay, so, okay, so, so the Christ mind, the son of God, um, and, and of course, uh, you know, can, we can think of Jesus resurrecting from the dead. Um, um, it's, it's the teaching that we are eternal um, beings of love and light as God. Uh, our creator. Um, and that is within us. We can actually see that. We can see the Christ within us, which is our true self. Um, so the overcoming of death was not just, I mean, that was basically the salvation of the world, uh, the overcoming of death. Um, um, because remember that the world is a world um, that we made to um to escape from you could say the belief that god was going to come after us because we separated and we offended god and therefore we left knowledge we traded knowledge for perception and the mind became a perceiver rather than the knower so um So, 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 so to be able to see reality means that we have remembered, <laughs> remembered truth, remembered the truth of being one son, no separation. Um, and so the, the holy mind would have to extend the truth and the truth would have to reflect um, the eternal, the deathless in ourself. And so we would see a world that cannot die. So obviously we would see a world that, let's see, we would have to see past the forms, you know, the bodies um, and see a world that is just whole and complete um, and loving. Um, so um, you will see only the eternal as you look upon a world that cannot die. Having looked upon the deathless in yourself. So it, that almost seems to me like it would be a, a revelation, you know, of having, um, of having direct, having had a direct experience with the eternal. Um, so that so that that can now come forth and be extended uh, as we look upon a world that would um, have to reflect that holiness. And there's a few lessons, you know, that that um, talk about that. My holy mind sees. Let's see if I can find a couple of those. Um, my holy mind sees the holy world, something like that. Let's see, lesson 50. I am sustained by the love of God. Um, let's see. Let me just go to the to the index of the lessons. Uh, two ninety five. Let's see. Um, lesson. Lesson. 295, the Holy Spirit looks through me today. 296, Holy Spirit speaks through me today. Uh, 299, eternal holiness abides in me. 
Uh, let's see. Yes, so 304, let not my world obscure the sight of Christ. Um, yes, so let's see, 266, uh, my holy self abides in you, God's son. 264, I am surrounded by the love of God. 263, my holy vision sees all things as pure. Yeah. 270, I will not use the body's eyes today. So it's a it's a release from the identification with the body mm, to the identification with the Christ mind. That is the only son of God, the one son of God. Okay. And there, you know, there's a whole bunch of other ones like uh, uh, 191, I am the Holy Son of God himself. Um, 195, love is the way I walk in gratitude. Uh, 200, there is no peace except the peace of God. And um, let's see, 223, God is my life. I have no life but his. Yeah, 229, love which created me is what I am. Um, so love which created me is what I am. And therefore, you know, what is within is without. So the world would be love. And that, that last line, you will see only the eternal as you look upon the world that cannot die. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, that's this this section. Okay, any any questions on looking within? I know that's a lot because you know we we um we, we don't want to make it personal. You know, we don't want to say like, oh, great. Here I am looking at the war with Ukraine, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I must be at war with myself, <laughs> you know. The, the big tyrant and the little, you know, <laughs> defenseless victim, you know, kind of a thing. Um, but 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 metaphorically speak, speaking it's it it is a good way to 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 give all of these um they're just errors okay they're not they're false ideas of separation so it's a way to metaphorically see what i am still holding on to that i'm that I may have hidden from myself. And I can just give that over to the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I forgive that because, you know, that's not the will of God. So how can, how can that be, um, how can that be true if God is only um, love? And I, I do remember, I do remember saying that when my kids were young. Okay, because that's sort of the, uh, when I first came across the Course in Miracles, that was one of the things that really drew to me, drew me to the Course in Miracles, because I was looking at, um, you know, um, Sonia, when you had asthma, if you were two, and your brother had it when he was sick, six, and um, I really remember seeing that and asking, how is that possible? You know, how can a loving God be, be responsible for sickness? And I had to question that because up to that point, um, it seemed, <laughs> it seemed as if sickness came from God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what, that was how I grew up. <laughs> um, you know, so you know, we would say, okay, well, God, you know, God heal us, 
because we were just assuming that God was the one that gave us the sickness in the first place. So God could take it away. Um, but, but, but once I realized, wait a minute, you know, that can't be true. A loving God would not be a God that would bring suffering to children like that. Um, I had to start really, um, uh, what's the word? I, I had to make a decision for what I really wanted to believe. And the starting point is always, you know, what what do I really want to believe? That God is unloving? Is that really what I want to believe? <laughs> you know, um, it's not in my best interest to believe that. You know, why would I want to believe that God brings death? Well, God gives life. So, you know, how could God give death? Uh God would also have to have death to give death and then God would not be eternal. So you, you have to really kind of start questioning just the beliefs that we have accepted that make no sense at all. Um, and especially the very, very basic ones around, um, around what we think life is, what we think God is and what we think we are. Those are the most fundamental ones. So, okay. So let's see, unless there's anything else we can stop. No, anything more? All right. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for joining. We'll see you next time.